let's turn to um, uh, China. Yeah. The forty-six percent of the respondees said that this is the greatest uh, risk to global growth in twenty sixteen. Um, the um, uh, Chang Yong, what's your outlook for China in, in twenty sixteen? Will they continue to uh, use command and control and manage a, a growth slowdown and uh, or um, what's the risk of a hard landing, however? Uh, and it would be nice if you could define mm. a hard landing in China. You know, our growth forecast for 2016 this year mm -hmm. is 6.3%. Right. And uh, next year is 6.0%. Right, so right. we are expecting they will slow mm. down from 6.9 to 6.3 and 6.0. Right. 6 .0. right. And if you say this is a really rapid growth slowdown, it's rapid. But uh, as I mentioned, that uh, we this is anticipated mm -hmm. transition from very high unsustainable growth mm -hmm. to the more uh, gra you know more sustainable growth rate. Mm -hmm. So we and we think this kind of we have to think about this is there is a desirable aspect that China is slowing down. Mm -hmm. You cannot expect that uh, China that size can grow mm -hmm. seven to ten percent every year. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and if you look at the recent three months or the, in the last quarter in statistics from the real sector, actually we didn't we didn't see any negative news. I mean, mm -hmm. so we didn't actually find that ourselves need to readjust our growth forecast. If you especially look at uh, many people cite that uh, you know their manufacturing sector is really doing bad, electric consumption, mm -hmm. cement consumption, all these things. We know that the industrial sector and traditional manufacturing sector is not doing good. So mm -hmm. if you look at the fourth quarter, the gross number mm -hmm. is uh, below six and five, five-ish gross rate. But on the other hand, if you look at the, the new gross pole, such as the services, sales, consumption, and service sector now account uh, more than 50% of the value added of China, and their gross rate is well above 8%. So in some sense, as long as you believe, the, you know, whether you believe the official statistics or not, is a big debate now, mm -hmm. but based what we are assuming, what we are now seeing is consistent with uh, this above 6% growth rate, especially right. when you look at the, the tax revenue of last year. Mm -hmm. That is quite strong, quite consistent with uh, right. you know, near 7% growth rate. So we believe that at this moment, uh, we do not need to revise our uh, view that their fundamentals, especially in the real sector, right. growth momentum mm -hmm. is above 6% in the mm -hmm. next one or two years. But the question is that why then, why, why did the financial market has this jitter and uh, you know, mm -hmm. strain in the beginning of the year? So if I have a time, then I will explain what, how we interpret this. You know, okay, well, why don't we, I, you know, we did have a program here on that. I'm not sure if we addressed that, <laughs> that question thoroughly. We could certainly turn back to that. Phil, what, do you, what, what's your, uh, what are the risks in China and how do you see China Well, I, no, I, I think the characterization, the IMF characterization is, is the right one. Mm -hmm. you, you know, the, the problem, of course, is for the rest of the world, uh, you know, a booming service sector, but a collapsing industrial mm -hmm. sector is a big problem. So right. I think that's one of the reasons why even this apparent success story is, is, is an issue. I think the two other con things that concern us, and being very, very blunt and simple about it, is number one, um, you know, there is a, a massive stock of debt that supports this increasingly dubious uh, stock of fixed assets. So, yeah. you know, you've got a lot of investment in the manufacturing and industrial sectors right. and in construction, mm -hmm. which doesn't look like it can throw off mm -hmm. the income that can service right. those debts. Mm -hmm. um, and historically, that's something that's given you, especially in East Asia, that's given you a big problem. Mm -hmm. um, in East Asia, typically the way out, well, actually, before we get there, why don't we talk about what gives us the crisis in East Asia? And it's typically a funding problem. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as those assets become increasingly difficult to to service, the people funding them, which in many mm -hmm. cases in the East Asian past, including most obviously Korea, mm -hmm. was foreign investors, foreign lenders, short-term mm -hmm. lenders. And then pulling their money mm -hmm. out in 97 was the mm -hmm. trigger point to the Korean crisis. Right. The big difference with China today and Korea in late '97 is, mm -hmm. Korea, uh, China does not have that dependence on external funding. That's the good news. The bad news is it's all funded through the domestic deposit mm -hmm. system in the banking sector, and what we saw in the, from really from August through the end of last year, putting it very simply, was was uh, an element of of deposit flight out of China, 
uh, mm -hmm. one way or another, a huge amount of capital leakage out mm -hmm. of China. Mm -hmm. And that, that, I think, is what scares operators like us in, in these markets, that if you extrapolate those trends, even if you've got a booming service yeah. sector, mm -hmm. you, can, you can quickly have a very rapidly deteriorating domestic banking sector with a lot of difficulties. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that worries us a lot, even in this good scenario. Sure. The other thing that worries us a lot, and I'll be very, very frank, but obviously don't want to be too alarmist, is we worry that the Chinese authorities themselves have lost a bit of their magic touch. Right, right. You know, uh, uh, right. You know and are doing things that, I, I mean, have a sort of European degree of coherence to them. Maybe I think I got my point across. very worried. I think I got my point across. Guangdong will be the, uh, the Greece of, uh, of China. Yeah, that is uh, that's very important because the um, um, well, they had a, a, a state-owned economy still, but the uh, uh, the authorities did manage to, I think, epical reform periods. Of course, the opening reform with Deng Xiaoping and the I guess that was the Eleventh Party Congress, the Central Committee Congress, and then the the Fourteenth when Zhu Rongji was in the Central Bank, uh, and they managed a, a massive restructuring of the economy, and now. With Xi Jinping in charge in 2013, it was the 18th uh, Central Committee, the third plenum announced mm -hmm. these sweeping reforms, but um, letting markets uh, play a greater role. But uh, the the regulatory and the institutional changes seem to be not supporting that. That that's the that's the fear you have, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one. That's an illustration, yeah. but yeah. there are many other. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, you know, I think it grows the you, IMF. Would you like to give your view on the uh, <laughs> on the markets in China? You know, you sh in some sense, I can understand the concern. Uh -huh. but, uh, we, I think we need to be a little bit more generous mm -hmm. because they are really this is big ship, right? You know, China's mm -hmm. big ship. Now they are trying to change the direction, mm -hmm. and this process, with especially with uh, financial market liberalization, cannot be completely perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And then you know, mm -hmm. so we have to expect that this road will be bumpy. Right. But in general, I think the trend will go on, mm -hmm. and uh, in in this process, they will do lots of learn, uh, learning by mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. So I think in general, I do not want to say that uh, they will really lose mm -hmm. controls. But now they have a more new challenges, right? And uh, in the new territory, especially financial market, right. Right. so they have to, I uh, you know, manage it better, right? Communicate uh -huh. that better. But I think in general, right. I think fundamentally, I think they have ability to do so. Yeah. Especially their system is quite robust, and uh, also. As you mentioned, uh, Dr. Shuttle mentioned that uh, they, the debt, all this leverage is coming from the old domestic. So in some sense, they, mm -hmm. they can control better than right. the, in 1997 in Asia. <coughs> and actually what he described is related with uh, uh, this new, uh, the, the issue that I raised, why they, in the beginning the stock market and the exchange mm -hmm. rate market in China was a little bit, uh, you know, has a big turmoil in the beginning of the year, uh, even though we have this good scenario. I think it's uh, basically the point that you mentioned, the huge leverage of the manufacturing sector, especially large state-owned mm -hmm. enterprise sector, was a key because you know it is not a short-term risk, but many people believe that the leverage too high is not sustainable, so they need to restructure. And then, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, if you do the restructure very significantly, the growth rate will go down. But if they want to maintain the well above six percent growth rate, mm -hmm. then they have to rely on the uh, fiscal stimulus or expansionary monetary policy. But if you rely on the expansionary monetary policy, that has a tendency to depreciate your cu currency. So the depreciation mm -hmm. pressure start to build up from last year because people believe, okay, China can adjust to the six above six percent growth rate. But you know, to do that, they have to address the restructuring that will cause expansionary monetary policy. And that mm -hmm. is a kind of rational to think about it. And then now there is a you know deposit mm -hmm. flight to abroad. And that what matters uh, worse is that now China want to change their exchange rate regime. Previously, uh, they really tried to keep the exchange rate stable with respect to dollar. But now they announced from uh, December that they want to make it stable with respect to the you know the basket of the currencies of the you know the their trading partners. Mm -hmm. So that. Gives us, even though they really mean it. I mean, they really s say that they will do it. But people mm -hmm. has to investors has to adjust their expectation, mm -hmm. and also uh, they have to be tr uh, 
get a confidence that they really do it mm -hmm. what they are saying. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this is period, I, in my uh, interpretation, this is a pe transition period that China is building the new trust with the investors. Mm -hmm. So by showing I exactly what they are doing mm -hmm. it. And uh, from last December, if you look at the Chinese in exchange rate, uh, you know, they, they move quite stable with respect to the, the basket. Yeah, Sometimes day-to-day changes can come in, but it's, it looks quite mm -hmm. stable. So I think in the next couple of uh, uh, months, before they really establish the trust, mm -hmm. this pr transition period, together with the depreciation mm -hmm. pressure based on this or macro policies, mm -hmm. expecting mind policy, can cause some bumpy road. Right. So at this moment, I think China need to be very clear about their uh, policy packages. Mm -hmm. For example, when even though they do the restructuring, they have to probably mention that they will invite more foreign strategic investors. So at the same time, they invite uh, more foreign capital mm -hmm. and uh, really change the you know the state-owned enterprise to have a more uh, you know profitable entity. Focus on the small number of important cases, mm -hmm. and rather than uh, so it's in some sense it reduce the expectation from the market that they will rely on the liquidity injections and go back to the previous mm -hmm. model to save mm -hmm. the older companies. And right. at the same time, they have to show by the you know, re, you know, exchange rate movement, that they really mean it, the new exchange rate system. So together with this more consistent uh, policy packages and the better communication, we hope that uh, you know, the, you know, this, this, sh this short-term financial volatility mm -hmm. may go down. Right, right, right. But that would only involve um, some deep uh, reforms in China, right, where yeah. the, the PBOC can gain independence from the uh, state council, right? But e e okay, I think this, uh, their system is yeah. quite different. So right. maybe mm -hmm. they may not get a full independence. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a more domestic issue, which I shouldn't comment on it. But right. okay. whether you, they have a more co uh, collaboration between agencies, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, they can better communicate it, definitely. Okay, right, right. Communication mm -hmm. with Chinese characteristics. So do, 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 you, do you see these institutional reforms uh, taking place that will establish trust for the market, um, Phil? Do you share the same concern? Um, well, um, I mean, it has to, if it's going to happen, it has to kind of, it has to happen uh, in the form of a significant change in the behavior that we've seen in recent weeks mm -hmm. and months. Right. You know, I think recent weeks and months have actually been very bad for right. uh, credibility in terms of, yeah. uh, you know, establishing a coherent, uh, clear set of rules. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a sense, I think where markets are coming around to, to, to uh, realize it, what they're coming around to realize mm -hmm. is that, number one, the offshore RMB is dead. Mm -hmm. You know, so there is only one Chinese currency, which mm -hmm. is the onshore CNY. The CNH experiment, you know, didn't really work mm -hmm. and it's going to get phased out in some mm -hmm. fashion. Uh, and the, that CNY is going to get controlled very tightly. Mm -hmm. And that's not, you know, that's not, you know, that's not the end of the world. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of Europe until fairly recently had pretty tight exchange controls. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you can have mm -hmm. a very, very open civilized economy integrated in all that without necessarily mm -hmm. completely right. uh, liberal, liberal mm -hmm. capital policies. And I think that's where the market's coming to. The, mm -hmm. the big fear is just simply this, does it add up? You know, the part of the solution mm -hmm. to any country like this problem is exchange rate depreciation. Mm -hmm. And first of all, that's a big problem for the rest of the world. And second, does it open up the invitation for Chinese citizens, even though they are restricted? Mm -hmm. Does it open up the opportunity and the invitation for them to get their money offshore as quickly mm -hmm. as possible? Because that, that's mm -hmm. a very, you know, it's a very, we, we've seen it in many places in East Asia in the right. last 15, 20 years where a, a depreciation can be part of the solution, but it can also be a big part of the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, in some sense, I think uh, it's true that they, there is a significant room for them to in, enhance mm -hmm. the communication. That's, I think, critical at this moment. But I want to emphasize that uh, from our advice, uh, given these difficulties of transition of this big country into a new regime, the sequence of this liberalization and opening is quite mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. So we want to make clear that uh, we shouldn't expect that uh, China in the near future mm -hmm. you know, completely liberalize the financial sure. market. Mm -hmm. I think they have to first uh, you know, the make monetary policy and their domestic financial mm -hmm. market more liberalized, and uh, mm -hmm. they uh, make a monetary policy more focused on the mm -hmm. price signals such as interest rate, and uh, rather than mm -hmm. a quantity, uh, you know, 
controls, mm. which they did quite significantly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they make a gradually uh, exchange rate system <laughs> more flexible yeah. with, res with respect to the bilateral right. exchange right. rate. I think uh, in some sense, uh, referencing is not, they say, fixing. Mm -hmm. Referencing with respect to the basket, I think it's a good right. transition right. movement into there. Right. But I don't think that, that they are ready to actually remove the capital control mm -hmm. because, you know, you know, given that they are still developing stage stages and given that they're large, you know, uh, the transitional mm -hmm. challenges they have to have, probably the capital, removing the capital control Maybe the uh, something yeah. they have to do it after they uh, stabilize the market. Right. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, I think uh, in the last five, <laughs> ten years, mm -hmm. when uh, China has a unidirectional pressure for currency appreciation, they had a, a de jure uh, capital control uh, mm -hmm. rules. But in order to, in some sense, uh, decrease the uh, appreciation pressure, they allow the de facto, mm -hmm. de facto, you know, capital. Movement, mm -hmm. but now I think what they are doing in offshore market and others, mm -hmm. if I see more like a benign way, they may actually tighten the capital control by applying the the rule they already existed, mm -hmm. because that will give a little room to allow more flexibility in exchange rate. So right. I, I I really hope that the, the they need definitely need a better communication, but mm -hmm. at the same time, uh, the mm -hmm. the financial market has also understand mm -hmm. their challenges. And has a ten, you know, some kind of attitude to listen to them and see uh, mm -hmm. whether see actually whether they are doing what they are saying. Right, 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 right. Um, I think two areas when I was looking at China um, in which they did make progress in in uh, in policies, not necessarily using market tools, was um, starting to get a grip on the shadow market, uh, the shadow banking system financing. At one time, that was a large concern that this would spiral out of control, but that's been pretty well tamped down and um, through uh, macro prudential regulation. Would you look at that as a, a success in, in policy in China? Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. uh, the last couple of years, especially last two years, they, uh, they really focus on the shadow banking issues, mm -hmm. especially the local government, you know, financing right, vehicles. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, by introducing the new, uh, you know, the fiscal rules mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, you know the budget law they right, call, right. and now they are moving. Uh, you know, making this off-balance uh, shadow banking lending and mm -hmm. borrowing to a more on-balance shadow right. banking sector. Right. So it's not solving the fundamental problem, but mm -hmm. still making it more transparent right. and mm -hmm. trying to rein in the credit growth. But now, given the slowdown of the, uh, you know, the growth rate, it's a dilemma, right? If they really continue to do it, probably it may, uh, in, have a, some negative impact on the growth. So the dilemma is that we think that uh, if the growth is slowed mm -hmm. down more than expected, they have to rely more on the fiscal policy. Mm -hmm. And you know, the most fiscal policy in a, re in a regional and uh, in a provincial level, mm -hmm. so local government uh, you know, funding mm -hmm. is very important. Right. And then now uh, with this new need, maybe the, the effort to uh, rein in this right. uh, right. slowdown of the shadow banking, right. maybe temporary uh, right. you know, right. in, in right. a, you know, slowed. Right. So that is a concern, but how you manage this you know, right. delicate balance will be a key challenge. Well, we'll save us certainly a lot of uh, uncertainties. <laughs> yeah. But they do have the fiscal space, right? They have uh, at least uh, the general government, the central government, yeah. everything that's on the, yeah, on the sure. books and seen is maybe the deficit will go up to 3% this year, right, of GDP, yeah. which is moderate deficit. And yeah. Government debt itself is low. It's the contingent liabilities. Okay, well, um, this is the Korea Society, so maybe we should turn to uh, our, our, uh, the Korea, how this all affects Korea. Uh, Peter, could you turn to the, there we go, the polling questions. <laughs> okay, so the greatest risk to South Korea's economic growth in 2016 uh, will come from um, in the United States, zero. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, and the largest one is uh, uh, well, domestic household debt and... Uh, uh, lack of political consensus for reform. Uh, China's substantial still. Um, and, um, and then the other 8% again. Um, I can ask Chang Yong to start off. Um, but before I do that, can we advance the slide to what the Bank of Korea thinks the greatest risk to the financial system is? This is in the Bank of Korea's financial stability report, the most recent one. 
is a mid-year report from 2015. Peter, do you have those three slides that I gave? Okay, well, this is, this is one of them. This is um, uh, the, the key risks to the, I think, to the economy. And uh, household debt is at the top. It's a medium-term risk. Uh, low growth is next. And China and the U.S. Fed interest rate normalization. Now, this is before the Fed liftoff. Uh, we're about equal. And then uh, we can get a little more granular. The next slide, Peter. Yeah, so this is looking at... Um, this is how the Bank of Korea looks at the capital adequacy in the financial system. If the capital remains high, uh, this is a buffer to shocks, and the government won't have to go in and recapitalize the banks. Uh, so the Fed policy interest rate of 1% 100 basis point increase in rates, I think, is what you expect over the next year. Uh, we still live the BIS ratio, a very technical term, at 13%. That's a very high level, right? A prudent, prudent level. Um, a uh, slowing of Chinese growth uh, uh, would, uh, sorry, that's 13.9%, would have a 1% slowdown. I guess this is over a year period. I'd have to read the, the footnotes here if you're getting it right now. A slightly greater effect because it reduces the capital buffer. And uh, a greater slowdown of uh, three percentage points would, um, would still leave the, the banks in pretty good shape. But if there's a combined shock, um, which is probably unlikely, right, Fed, Fed, Raising interest rates while the global economy is is becoming unraveled, you'd have a greater effect. But still, the BIS ratio remains, I think, fairly good at ten point six percent. Right. So that's the Bank of Korea. Now, if we can turn back to the respondees um, pie chart, Peter, two slides before, and we can we can tackle Korea. Um, do, do you? Um, uh, this is this is actually a planted element to this question. What what do you see the greatest risk at Chang Yong uh, to uh, to South Korea in twenty sixteen? And can you elaborate on that a little? Uh, surprisingly, North Korea is not in here either. Yeah, zero uh, is too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think in in general, I my preference is actually to point out this lack of political consensus for reform right, right. because you know, as you just point out uh, in the last few years. Uh, in Korea's uh, macro management has been mm -hmm. quite robust, and uh, uh, we learn a lot mm -hmm. from the 1997 financial mm -hmm. crisis. So in, we have a very low, you know, FX debt at this moment. So I think uh, we are in the short term, mm -hmm. we are less vulnerable than any other emerging economies. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, we have to cons we have to be concerned, but I think mm -hmm. it's not a, like a red alarm at this moment. Right, right. But on the other hand, if you look at the slowdown of our economy, right. uh, it's, we cannot expect we are going back to the 5 to 7% growth rate, but still, mm -hmm. you know, the economic growth rate has been low, lower than 3% a couple of years, and we are really losing, seem to losing the dynamics, which is uh, one of the, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, brand, uh, you know, strong brand right, of a Korean right, brand. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And why we are so, I think, in some sense, we, we become more democratized, diversified. Mm -hmm. But it's a good sign. But it uh, looks like uh, there are many political different interests, and we have uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, quite different views about the new policies, mm -hmm. whatever. But in somehow, we didn't learn how to uh, manage and uh, compromise and reach the consensus when people have uh, quite mm -hmm. different opinions. Mm -hmm. So at this moment, I think uh, we just debate. Mm -hmm. And then you know, it, uh, you know, even though it's majority, mm -hmm. even though you do, uh, you know, you're not a, a, mm -hmm. you have a minor opinion, still you insist that your opinion mm -hmm. is good. And also the majority, the uh, mm -hmm. part, you know, majority people who has majority want to force mm -hmm. without getting enough consensus. So all these things make the uh, is progress difficult to introduce a new reform, right. which has quite different impact on the very various people. Right. So it really reminds me the, uh, you know, the like a lost dec two decades of the Japan. Right. You know, after right. the bubble bust, Japan, you know, one of the famous things Japan before mm -hmm. the Abenomics start is that their duration of the prime minister was six months, one right. year. Right. They right. all political ch political changes mm -hmm. coming in and they cannot really try the new reforms to, uh, you know, given the, all these uncertainties and challenges in the global economy. <coughs> so I, what I'm worrying about is this, you know, whether even though Korea, we have a right. very talented right. people, but given that mm -hmm. we have not yet reached the, mm -hmm. learn how to reach the consensus, mm -hmm. then whether we can really sh fastly adjust to the mm -hmm. changing environment. We have a demography problem. We have a now China slowdown. Mm -hmm. All global economic growth momentum is uh, reduced, mm -hmm. which means that the export growth is no longer 
uh, you know, give a solution to us. We need a new engine of growth. In order to do that, you need to reform your country. But we do not agree on the which policy will do it, right. even though we know some, right. you know, we discuss many things. That's right. what uh, you know, okay. makes me concerned. Right. And the demographic problem, um, what is that next year when the working age population reaches a peak? Yeah. Or this year? Exactly. Yeah. And Japan, that was the case, I believe, in 1995, yeah. uh, when the working age population reached a peak. Can you, um, I mean, w which reform do you think is a priority? Can you can name one in particular, something in the labor uh, for market? For me, or? I think it's a more service sector. Service, service sector, sector, especially, yeah. you know, the education, education, education. sector yeah. and the service sector. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, if you look at these days, what is our, you mm -hmm. know, really growing export item? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's uh, you know like healthcare and mm -hmm. you know cosmetic surgery from the whole over the world mm -hmm. and uh, you know the Korean cultural mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and the, these are the things that we can actually if you make it business we mm -hmm. can create employment yes manufacturing is important but if you look at the trend of the manufacturing sector's employment it has been already declining mm -hmm. from the you know ten years ago sure so mm -hmm. yes we we have to have a strong manufacturing sector but strong manufacturing mm -hmm. sector can contribute to the Having a strong service sector, legal service, education service, everything. Mm -hmm. But somehow, depending on the vested interest of some groups and uh, you know mm -hmm. concern about uh, income inequality, all these things, mm -hmm. so we cannot do anything about it. Okay, good. Do you um uh, and uh, where does the IMF see Korea's real GDP growth this year and next year? I'm very sorry because you know we are actually at, at this moment working on our new forecast. Uh -huh. So. 2.7 was our focus for 2015. Right. 3.2 was our focus for 2016, mm -hmm. but right. that was made in uh, October. Right. So you know, after that, many things change. Right. So now we are, uh, you know, revisiting right. these numbers. That will be available uh, at the end of February. Okay. I was uh, instructed not to say about this. Today. <laughs> 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 Thought I'd give it a try. I didn't see those figures. Well, for what it's worth, the Bank of Korea uh, published its. Um, its uh, economic outlook for 2016 on um, on Thursday, last Thursday, and they they note that uh, GDP growth in 2015 uh, was likely 2.6 uh, percent. I don't think that's a final number yet. And in 2017, they see 3.0, and in 2017, 3.2, which is about the potential growth rate of Korea, right? Don't try. <laughs> okay. <All right>. uh, <laughs> Phil, what uh, do you have any? Insights or comments or concerns well, about uh, Korea? Well, I mean, I, I, th I think, uh, you know, if you think there's a domestic component and a, and a global mm -hmm. component, the, the, the way I, we look at the domestic component is Korea is another one of these countries that, frankly, has approached, you know, is into a mature phase of its, mm -hmm. of its you know, development, growth, growth pattern, whatever you call it. Uh, and the new normal in that world has a two handle on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, possibly even less. I mm -hmm. mean, in some ways, a well-managed transition to to steady-state growth in this type of uh, scenario, a, a good outcome mm -hmm. is is something above two. You know, you, you yeah. mentioned Japan, yeah. where where real growth, you know, struggled to to stay positive, although on a per capita basis, probably healthier than most people uh, right. perceived it to have been. Um, I mean, I do think you know, it's a theme that we've been kind of getting at all night, which is this rotation out of manufacturing into yeah. services. It's something that globally is, is going to be more important. Mm -hmm. It seems to me the economy that keeps surprising <clears throat> us on the upside in Asia is actually Australia, mm -hmm. which you know should be doing disastrously given its resource base, but actually right. keeps bouncing back. And one reason for that is Australia's got a very, very vibrant global services sector, mm -hmm. including especially an education mm -hmm. sector that's very strong and fuels mm -hmm. is, is fueled by uh, flows, people right. flows within right. the region, right. obviously, especially from China. Um, mm -hmm. So I think the importance of growing a dynamic service sector is very, very key. To me, the bigger global story for Korea is Korea fits into that group of countries uh, which are in a very difficult position at the moment because small open economies mm -hmm. are going to get thrown around a lot by what's going on with these big guys sort of jostling amongst themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I, I was here six months ago before, before you were President Byrne <laughs> and uh, before the coup. <laughs> and uh, and uh, one of the points I was making back then was in some ways to me, the comparator country mm -hmm. for Korea is actually Sweden, kind mm -hmm. of, you know, across the other side of the world. But so many of the same difficulties facing 
um, you know, a, a very open economy with a big manufacturing sector and global presence, but facing very difficult conditions around mm -hmm. it and a tendency for other neighbors, big neighbors, mm -hmm. to want to depreciate themselves mm -hmm. back to competitiveness. And I think that feeds back yeah. on yeah. onto Korea. So, yeah. so one of our, frankly, one of our favorite trades of this year is to be short yeah. one, because we think the one gets taken down mm -hmm. as a currency, not because really mm -hmm. of anything in Korea, but because yeah. it, it's a tradable instrument in a, in, a, in, a, in a region where things like the CMY are much less tradable. Right, right. Well, that's a very um, a flattering competitor for, for Korea, at least from uh, my previous employer had, a, I believe, a AAA on Sweden and now a AA2 on Korea. So uh, uh, competing with the AAAs or similar yeah. to the AAAs. <laughs> All right, thanks. Well, um, we've uh, exceeded our hour and uh, we thank everybody for coming. And I would also like to ask you if you could help us out um, evaluate our program so we could uh, improve our programs, uh, bring speakers that uh, you find interesting and informative. And so we left a, an evaluation form on your seats. And if you have the time, please fill it out. Uh, I think that's it. So uh, thank you, Phil. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.